Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NLC. We're going into our fourth game of the evening. Riddle up against Fnatic Rising. And Gulberg, I don't know about you, we've had a couple of upsets today, but these two teams really evenly matched. I mean, I, I, I still think um, the, the fact that a lot of us win from Riddle, um, it, it's still not as that there are clear favorites. I, I, I gotta say, they had a nice 3-0 week going into the last week of Cross Division split here. Um, but I think a lot of people are still looking on towards Fnatic Rising and saying, all right, this is still the stronger team coming into this one. And specifically because of the fact that because last time these two teams played against each other, it was an absolute stomp from Fnatic as well. Yes, but there has been some pretty serious character development from the side of Riddle, in my opinion. Mm. Just, you know, we've spoken to multiple players now, uh, and it's very much been the narrative because it's been reflected in the score, right? They're seven of four, they're tied with all the other top teams right now. Uh, and they have gotten so much better since that first uh, matchup against Fnatic Rising. They took down BTXL in their previous game. You know, arguments to be made, okay, BTXL playing a little more loose because, you know, Markun and Advin were leaving. But at the same time, that was probably the strongest we'd seen XL look, you know, this split so far, and they still managed to pick up a win, regardless mm. of some of the context inside of that game individually. So I'm looking at Riddle and I'm saying, okay, you're part of the exclusive club that has a win against an academy team. You're looking for revenge because the way you got stomped in the first week and the first game, you want to take another win here. Has any other teams so far beat both academy teams? Both? Oh, no, I don't think anyone's beaten both. Think so, I, think, no. I think teams have only beaten one or the other. I don't think anyone's uh, done the done the double accounts. Ooh, well, Gwen. there we go. Draft has come through, and that's going to just be the Gwen first pick coming through. The likes of Lee Sin is up and available as well. Set has been picked away from the side of Fnatic, so I think there's a lot of good priority bands coming away. But Febby's Lucian is the champions we've seen him had a lot of priority together with the Jace um, in this spring split as well, or summer split rather as well, um, and is still up and available for the mid lane of Fnatic. This could actually be the Lush, uh, the Fresh, even being locked in. So they're going for that support option. Doesn't mean that they're not going to go for Lucian. Of course, they have a second pick, but there it's going to be. Could be going mid. They could flex it down bot, but with Fresh, is that a duo that we're expecting to see potentially? Uh, no, probably not. I think. Hell no. No, no. no. It's very <laughs> rare to see Lucian bot. I think, at least in terms of you know our AD carry players here in the league, the only players that I know for sure probably do oh, play the Lucian is Monk and. I don't know. <laughs> M Monk is about the only person that I think would ever run the evolution. But he's done it once this day already. Mm. Uh, but yeah, over to Riddle now. With that Gwen pick, whilst I do obviously believe typically the strongest lane is in the top side, I think in the context of Riddle, we probably see MC on it, unless we see like a last sort of rotation deviation away from that. Uh, but with this Nautilus lock in, I'm expecting a strong bottom lane just straight up pairing. You've already got one AP laner. Uh, up on the top side of the map so i don't think you necessarily need to lock anything else in but honestly you know what Ooh. kex was an absolute monster on this wukong so i'm a pretty big fan of this lock too it's a champion that we've seen a lot of success on in uh, various leagues and of course kex as you said is an absolute monster when it comes to wukong and it comes to the top lane so probably going to be seeing that we'll have to see what Fnatic rising lock in but there's still plenty of potential from these two drafts and not that much has been revealed so far i would say there we go. So I was wondering when we were going to start seeing Aphelios again. Got a few bops on 12, on 13 uh, a bit as well. And, you know, Thresh Aphelios, just one of the uh, bottom lames that kind of has developed uh, over the course of Aphelios' release ever since that. You know, the Lansing can bring him to safety. There's a lot of these dive composition. Aphelios does well in a scenario where he, d he has to kite back, which is basically all of this meta at the moment. So, you know, just really nice to see him out here as well. And obviously with Riddle still having their AD carry so up and available, that's probably what Gonna, what we're going to start seeing banned here wouldn't be a surprise to see the Estral of Aris ban as well just to kind of pinch yeah. Goopy down on, on, on some of these picks as well yeah I mean for me the only two sort of competitive meta picks at the moment that really give the uh, the FNS a hard time Varus, Callista everything else especially when we've got a Thresh is relatively pilotable to be honest with you so I wouldn't be surprised to see Fnatic just remove away that but oh okay Ooh. Ziggs is also an interesting option too uh, you've got a smile on your face I feel like you know something that I maybe don't uh, a lot of with, people with in, in, in the LPL has just decided, you know what, AD carries are so piss useless in this patch that we're just going to be putting mages down there and just, you know, they're just going to have to scale into the mid game. Um, so that's kind of been the thought process for, for some of them there. And Six has obviously been one of these champions that's risen in uh, priority as well. Yeah, okay. So 
We'll have to see what Riddle decides to do. I mean, like I said, Barris I think available. the Barris is like the other strong option, and you've got the Nautilus there, so the lockdown is pretty strong. Uh, almost had a Grax lock in, but oh man, Lulu, Thresh, double AD carries. You're going to probably lock in a frontline uh, jungler as well. I think Vnayak have the foundations for a very, very, very strong composition. Uh, but where's your frontline? But where's your oh. frontline right now? Exactly. So I'm looking at Maxi and I'm saying, what kind of champion are we going to see come out of you? Because traditionally, to me, you know, Maxi's not necessarily lent on these tanks since he's been in the uh, since he's been in the NLC. Uh, so I'm curious to see exactly how Fnatic went around their their composition for Riddle. Now I think the very much expected Varus pick and time to see where this Gwen's going. I predicted it's going to end up in MC's hands. The Wukong pick also kind of solidified that because uh, we don't see much mid lane Gwen. So over to slow cube, what we're going to see, the Jace is obviously removed away. There's no Viego sets off the table. So is Renekton. So a lot of the AD mids that we typically see are kind of gone. Uh, so I think we end up honestly seeing a, a regular mage, maybe someone like Victor. Oh, wow. Okay, interesting hover. Don't know, but I mean, another source of engage isn't too terrible into the likes of this Fnatic Rising composition, in my opinion. So I wonder if we're going to see Wukong mid. I wonder if, or Orn mid, because I feel like you can probably lane them both in, in any lane. Uh, here with what uh, Fnatic are running. <laughs> Fnatic can grab themselves some AP in that mid lane, you've got to imagine. Um, or actually in the jungle, rather, unless they're playing something really spicy down there. And it's going to be the Udyr being locked in, which is something that we even see a little bit, but not necessarily on the cards. Okay. Uh, a lot of this right now here can be, a, you know, a huge party for this Orn because most of the damage source coming out from Fnatic Rising is just pure AD based. Like, if you're not getting ahead of the item curve and, and this game goes out to a very stale late game, like this game, this game could be very hard for Fnatic. You want to stay uh, on touch of the on this board specifically because there's still a lot of good scaling on Riddle as well. Like this, this Gwen is going to do so well into the composition of Fnatic as well. I think Wukong's some yeah. biggest issues, but even then, when she's done, when she's in the Hollow Mist, it's very hard for the carries of, of Fnatic Rising to actually get onto her. And not only that, we've seen what a Varus can do when there is a lot of disruption going on in teams earlier. Specifically, we saw then Voxnes uh, kind of pop off, uh, even though they lost, I think, either like 55,000 damage. Uh, so I'm looking towards Gooby as well. With all of this backline threat via the ultimates uh, available to Riddle with the engagers, I want to see how much freedom he's allowed to sort of poke because there's, you know, outside of the Udyr, everyone else is a pretty vulnerable target if we see this Leaf Valley uh, build come out of it. Well, we've had some really exciting games so far in the NLC, and we're hopefully going to have a couple more starting off with this one. And these two bullies are going to be the one taking you through this one. It's Orcs and Hit Brain. Take it away. Bullies? I resent that. I honestly I, resent that statement. I haven't, but I went for a glass of water in the last break. What did I say to upset you, Viperoon? Uh, hello, and welcome back to the Caster Desk, where apparently we're a bunch of bullies. Um, this game is a bit of an interesting one for Fnatic, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm not sure. I, can, well, I can't really make heads or tails of this draft. Like, sure, you have an Aphelios with a Lulu, and if you get later into the game, it's going to be able to do a lot of damage. But also, if you get into later the game, like it was hit on the desk, and like you were typing to me, this Orn is going to be slightly immortal. It's going to be really hard to kill. Yeah, I feel like for me, Riddle come out better in, you know, the later game team fight skirmishes really heavily. I mean, obviously, Fnatic have a good backline to protect, but they don't really have a great frontline to go front to back. And you have things like the Varus, who can ignore front lines of fire arrows towards the back end. You have the Wukong, who obviously has created disruption. So, as a result, I really think Fnatic will struggle when it gets to the late stages. But, and there is a big but, you have Lucian and Udia. Now, Udi has dropped in priority a fair bit because he received some nerfs, but he's still got a decently fast clear. And you have Lucian, who is going to have prior mid, uh, factually. So really what this comes down to is Fnatic establishing an advantage around mid, which they should have, and then expanding that outwards. If Fnatic can play this early game really effectively, then we should see them able to snowball a big lead. And when that happens, you know, I think about Riddle's engage. I think if you're engaging, engaging onto a fed Aphelios with a Lulu Thresh, you'll just get absolutely shredded. So, you know, if Riddle weather the storm though, if Riddle, 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 Riddle have a good early game, similar to last one, we can see a similar scenario of like Resolve where they never really lose footing unless they make a big mistake. Uh, well, no shenanigans to start us off. We haven't had any of that today. So I say that and Rock seeks the hook. He's gonna lose a lot of health, but will survive for now. And uh, it's... 
Riddle, who come out with the ward in the end, is uh, Rox is going to try his best to take it, but he's not going to be able to do so. But I mean, it's a decent 2v2 coming out from Nautilus Barris in this lane in particular. A lot of harassment. Yeah, there it is. They're they looking. find the hook onto the perfect target. The exhaust comes through. The bean is going oh so low. The cleanse comes out as the ignite goes down. And bean is going to have to reset on the first wave. Yeah, I mean, just a massive advantage already for the bot lane of Riddle. Bean's in a really uncomfortable spot. And combat summoners down. Ignite only bean from Riddle. They still have the heal. So th there's no chance Fnatic ever really restabilize this lane. They just have to give a ton of respect and accept that the 2v2 is pretty doomed for now until obviously they get off like a first reset and get some health back. So Grey Star here. And actually we saw a bit of a switch up. Kex is in the mid lane with the Wukong and we see the Orn on the top side, which honestly, you know, I feel like the Wukong able to contest the Lucian a little bit more. Uh, obviously not as tanky as the Orn, but you can essentially dive on him, trade with him a little bit and then W away once you hit level three. So I feel like in that situation, like Kex is actually holding up pretty okay. He's still gonna lose in prio. But uh, a bit more trading power, a bit more skirmishing power early. It is a Lucian, though. There's not much that handles Lucian and Pryo in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, not wrong. Not in this matter, what at does? least. I'm actually trying, like, what champions do you think do actually pretty well into Lucian? Currently. Azir. 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 And yeah. again, like, people aren't really playing Azir. Like, you can pick Azir, you can shove it in. I mean, Feb even did that. You, shove, you can shove the Lucian in, but, like, you take some bad trades. But again, like, Problem is Lucian scales so well on top of that and really relevant in the early skirmishes. And he's he's not vulnerable. The thing is like you can win in priority. But like Azir is a good example because Azir has a lot of safety in his kit, right? But you could have something that could win in priority, but it wouldn't necessarily be safe. Whereas Lucian can just dash out and play pretty aggressive and like he's comfortable being in this position where he's played up, he's pushed the wave up. I mean, look at the mid and the bot farms as well, respectively, because Fevy got a big lead over Kex in the CS department, 10 CS up already. And then bot side, 26 to 14. You see, it, it's, it's farm is definitely being determined by how much harass they're able to put down in the lane. And Kex had to teleport back into the mid wave just to equalize out on the farm and catch that wave. But Fevy, being back to base, big to pick axe up. He can just teleport in or he's gonna walk in actually. So it may lose a couple of minions here and there, but I want to see if PlayStation can maybe find one of those hooks again, because that could be enough to set up a play. Mm. The hook goes just a little bit too short, and Rox and Bean will survive for now. And ideally at this point, Riddle want to crash this wave in and have a bounce back, because right now they are in a little bit of a precarious uh, situation. The jungler's reset and head to top side. Oh, expected. there's the play. They've actually brought Maxi in, looking for the bear slap onto Gooby. Going to be able to find him into the hook. Meanwhile, PlayStation secures first blood onto Gooby. Onto Bean, sorry, as Gooby is taken out. PlayStation flashes over the wall to safety. It's only going to be a one for one. But Bean's going to lose a hell of a lot of farm. I don't think he's there in time. Oh, uh, ooh, PlayStation cancels the reset. He wants to hold. This is dangerous, dude. Oh, he's dodging away. He's just about able to survive, but here comes Maxi. Looking to out. try and see if they can find the turnaround. Maxi gonna get caught up, and it's gonna be enough. No! Bean Maxi, whatever his name is, survives. A little bit messy from Riddle Bot Lane, honestly, and Bean will lose farm from this, but he's gonna catch that big mid wave that's now been shoved in. Essentially, we talked a little bit about the mid jungle of Fnatic Rising. Never even having that permanent priority able to move around and Maxi's early ganking power, which can't really be matched by a Gwen. The Gwen just doesn't have as much agency. And we saw that come to fruition in the bot lane where things are rough now. Kex could potentially be in trouble, but it looks like Riddle have more numbers on this play. Yeah, they're bringing in MC as well. It's Febby, gonna lose a fair amount of damage, but Max and the Graviton able to lock him in place. And PlayStation actually missing out, but here's the Cyclone onto Febbervan. Febbervan just about able to survive. Second Cyclone not gonna get cast until now. And now MC has to be careful. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Pride and Slowkey going for a bit of a trade here. The Wild Growth is used and Slowkey has to steer in charge away, but Pride continuing to fire away. A couple more auto attacks and he'll find the kill, but the flash comes down by Slowkey. And he's gonna be able to get out there scot free, but the action is not done yet. As the hook will go a little bit wide, but they're not done. They're not looking to give this up quite yet. As Maxi will get sent packing, they're going to call it there. What a fiesta, honestly, <laughs> is my comment on this one. I'm not sure Slow Q really needed a flash there. I think he was concerned about a flash EQ coming out, but I think he had enough health to survive. But again, 
you really don't want to coin flip that and get solo killed by a Lulu. That is <laughs> not something you want people to see. Although oh, he might be looking to solo kill the Lulu as that is going to be the end of Pride. He cancelled the Brittle, but Febby's going to slide in and look for the double tap. It's a one for one in the top lane. Yeah, just is able to get there in time. Feb even coming off a base, so he should be able to shove this wave in. And I guess Pride will TP mid and catch the wave there. And Feb is just trying to be everywhere. And that's what you need to do in this team, in this matchup. Mid jungle needs to be completely taking control of the map and doing as much as they can. Now, Brittle, because they have that bot lane priority, and Bean is massively far behind. Like, bear in mind, obviously, we saw that play on the bot side where Brittle's bot lane overextended with that information. But Bean wasn't the benefactor of that. He didn't get any kills, didn't get any farm, missed a massive wave because it got pushed against him. And now he's trying to be there in time for the stacking wave, but he is really far behind. And so as a result, Riddle can easily pick up that dragon on the bot side. And we talk a lot about how picking up those dragons can stall a game out as it's, you know, an extra five minutes before Soul. Let's say Fnatic Rising would get the next four dragons. And so as a result, Riddle can lean more into that later stages of into the later stages of the game. Yeah, um, we're seeing, you know, not even being finding an assist there in that bot lane in that play. So, you know, no gold going over to him. And he's pretty far behind. He got the serrated dirt picked up onto Gooby. A nice item pick up for him there. And it's more or less just calming down now. We had a, a, a big spurt of action in the mid lane. As uh, Rox is here in mid. He has got uh, Maxi with him, but I don't think anyone's going to be going down here. I like the move from PlayStation. It helps cover MC on his blue buff, so he's not going to get invaded. Helps try and secure some vision around Herald. Generally puts him in a good spot. And as you can see from bot lane, Gooby has priority, so he can start to make the walk up as well. And this gives Riddle the confidence to go for this Herald and start it up. So they know they're going to have a numbers advantage. If Fnatic commit to this, it will end in a 5v4. Well, will they decide to go for it? Or are they just going to call it off? In a pretty quiet game for MC, is Gooby just about dodges out on that death sentence. And you know what? If that hit, it would have been a 4v4. So, good yeah. thing he dodged it. Okay, X trying to turn it into a 3v4. He oh finds himself Lord. a shutdown onto Featherman. Rux now looking for the flank. He's going to get himself hooked up. Double hooks to come out and Bean's joining in. He's got the kill guns. Is that a double kill picked up for Kex already? And the Call of the Forge God will secure another one as Pride ults himself. But Slow Q will secure the kill. And Fnatic starting to crumble a little bit here. They can shove in the wave. They can take the plates. They've got the Herald. They're not going to push for more. I mean, Wukong is just so strong. And Kex has really been delivering on this champion. Finding the window to go in on Febivan. Solo kills him essentially, and we're talking about how it'd be a 5v4, it became a 5v3. And then finally we see Bean move over, but by that time the advantage is already secured for Riddle. They get the Herald, but they also get a spread of kills. And now 2,000 gold up, well, 1,500, they're feeling comfortable. Looks like Rox might bring Maxi over, although Bean's quite a ways away. They spotted them out thanks to the ward, but Rux is still bolting towards. He throws the lantern for the teleport to bring people in, and Gooby now has no cleanse. He's just going to get flayed back. He's going to get bear slapped. He's going to get hooked. And Pride will secure the kill. Unfortunately for Bean, all that action's breaking out, and he's not getting a single drop of money. Yeah, that to me was a bit of a wasted flash. Uh, you're not getting out of that, Gooby. He's got to accept your fate in this scenario. We're going to replay the top side play. It's just Feverbrim trying to contest mid prior against the Wukong when you've already lost it. And the Wukong is a threat. You can't disrespect him like that. Fnatic moved to try and assist, but they don't really have the damage to kill Kex quickly. And he manages to turn things around on a uh, Rux and then actually get out as the rest of the team are there. You know, at this point, it's a 3v5. Very late rotation from B9. I just think Fnatic had no right to contest that. And then, yeah, I mean, this play, there is just no way you get out unless Fnatic literally disconnect as you flash. It's, just, <laughs> it's not happening. Uh, so a bit of a wasted flash, which is potentially something Fnatic can love to punish. Now with a summoner down from Gooby, if it comes to the next dragon and they want to fight it, they can target him specifically. But realistically, the problem is you still have a Gwen, still have a Wukong. Those two are big threats. It's landing a little bit of damage from being there with the Calibrum Snipe into the Graviton. The wave's going to push in towards Riddle and they can just have to hold it here if they want to. And that looks like that is the game plan. Just to deny Bean even more gold. You've almost finished up that Dusk Blade onto Gooby. And Bean is sitting on components. He's got tier 2 boots, but he is nowhere near that Kraken Slayer or Shield Bow, whatever he decides to go for. As long as Riddle play respectful here, they should be fine in this scenario. 
There's no reason for them to play up. They don't know where the enemy jungler is. Crash Mark Kings are coming out. And critically, their top side is resetting now to move over to Dragon. So they shouldn't be stepping up. And I think you can kind of see from the way Bean is, is walking. They've got help here because Bean is weak. Bean is very weak. Yeah. And you're dealing with Nautilus Varus. You have to assume something's up here. There's the Lantern, there's the Flay, they're looking for it, the Moonlight Vigil comes down, and Bean will lock Gooby in place, he gets the kill. Meanwhile, Maxi looks to rip through PlayStation to bring the teleport, they're bringing the backup, Maxi taking a few tower shots, too many, and Slow Q slides in with the call oh, of the fourth uh, and gets what? the recast in the wrong direction, and here is MC with the needlework to try and give Maxi a haircut. One last stab and a snip snip will secure himself a double kill. Riddle, turn a fumble around. You know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm going to pretend it didn't happen because they got two kills anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to move Could on. Free. Maybe. But no. either way, what happened happened. They're able to deliver on the two kills. But they're like over forced. And you can kind of feel that Riddle suspected something. They they were ready for oh, that play. On. MC had moved down already. Oh. This is coming in. Forces Febby to flash. There we but go. Yeah, like it. You could sense they knew something was up, and so they weren't stepping up, but Gooby still ends up going a little bit too far and is engaged on. But the full team's there to respond. Pride has no TP. Debevan isn't interesting coming in because they know they're being clapped on. And as a result, Riddle are able to secure a bunch of kills and move on to this dragon now, which will be their second. It's been solid play so far from Riddle. And again, I favor their comp in the late game, just purely on the fact that it is so hard for 280 carries to play against this team. And they're going to become invincible by stacking armor. And we get the replay. They know Varus is flashless. They know they can punish that. But they should have just backed off here. Why are you chasing the Nautilus under tower? They, they don't have the damage to kill him quickly. And if they backed off there, they might have lost one at most. Right? In fact, if it, because of slow Q's failed combo, I don't think Fnatic lose anyone if they backed off as soon as they killed Varus. They got greedy. They overcommitted. And then they end up getting punished pretty heavily for it. Bebevan, though, is kind of quietly starting to pick up more and more farm, more and more gold as those plates will break. And he'll get himself another 160 gold. I think he's had all of the plates bar this last one in the top lane. So he's had a lot of gold injected into him, but Hook hits the minion from Rux, and that's going to be the end of that. MC was able to pick up the first Tower Blood and the plates onto his, um, onto his Gwen. And you can see there's a big lead between him and Maxi right now. So he's going to be very impactful. It's been fairly quiet from MC overall, but... After sliding and getting that double kill, he's pretty rich on the Gwen. And Gwen's a champion that's been pretty much perma banned. I think it's almost 100% pick ban right now in the uh, NLC. It's I think it's like 90% or something roughly. It's really high. I think like the champion's really strong, but it's kind of weird. Like there's there's a difference in priorities compared to like you know NA and EU compared to like China and Korea. Yeah. There they don't prioritize mu prioritize her as much. And honestly, like the early game's not that great. You can't punish her in the top lane. In the jungle, she's not the most proactive jungler, so you can shut her down. And often teams will look to do so, but it feels like this hasn't been done, this game, obviously. And she's been able to farm freely. Maxi has been heavily set on trying to impact lanes. And also, although Uri is still a decently fast clearer, he is slower than he used to be when he was like prime in the meta because of his nerfs. And he's fallen pretty far behind. So yes, Fnatic are trying to establish these plays on the map, but they are losing out pretty heavily. And you can see here, Riddle, Slow Q's fine, just being the weak side player, defending in this. I say that. Jumped onto Febby. Gets sped up by the Lulu and they're able to do a lot of damage to him. Pride, you know, actually buys time because the mini wave's now going to die. So it actually stole out. And with a big, bit of an interesting ult from Febbivin. Oh, he wanted, he wanted to get the Light Slinger up. That's why. So he could clear for the wave. That's my optimistic outlook on it anyway. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Look, man, we got we got to find we got to find a little bit of optimism where we can. Yeah, I mean, slow Q did a decent job on weak side. Riddle not really concerned. Yes, they end up losing that tower, but they're fine with that. They're applying pressure near the side, and I see the ocean soul, and this is actually going to be insane for Riddle. Like we've already talked about how they're like unkillable in the late stages of the game. Really hard to deal with Wukong with Gwen. There's so much sustain there. The same with this Orn who's going to be able to build full armor. 
if Fnatic Rising were 3k gold ahead with two dragons in pocket, I would feel a lot more comfortable. But they are in such a bad position, and I am not sure it gets better. Like like I said, you know, Kilios skills well, Oof. Virus skills decently well, but I just think it's so hard to navigate the team fight. You're short ranged into a virus, and you're playing against all these champions, which hard to auto attack. If you're in range of Wukong, you're probably getting Cyclone. If you're in range of Gwen, you're probably dead. If you're in range of Horn, probably getting CC. Well, this is um, starting to get pretty problematic for Fnatic because we said we wanted to see them get ahead early and, you know, Febervin's in a great position on the solution, yes, but he's being flanked and that's a pretty strong monkey. Not the Triforce, not the Divine Sundra, but Monkey Bop is big as the Cyclone will finish him up. Kex just finds an easy solo kill onto Febervin. And yeah, it truly is the day of upset, Sorks. How are you supposed to play any carry to that, honestly? Flash, Ooh. flash. Graviton comes out from Bean, but it's only going to do a little bit more to Flay Station. Trader Summoners does mean, you know, Bebivan now down flash, Rook's down flash, Maxi never had a flash. They're going to throw it on the Herald mid. It is a bit uh, bit soon for the Dragon, but it's still going to ensure that they have priority in the area and they can establish control. Tex is going to go for a recall, and the critical thing here is they can now get deep wards in. So if Fnatic rush to contest this Dragon, they have a big risk getting flanked. And I think you can see from these resets coming in, Fnatic aren't, aren't, aren't contesting this dragon. There's no way you're contesting it and you're recalling 20 seconds before. They've accepted the dragon's gone and they're going to play for something else. Maybe lean into the following dragon and look to scale up to that. Because it's just hopeless at this point to contest this one. Yeah, it might just have to be the plan there. But this will be our second ocean of the day, actually. And... Um... You know, Soul coming through for the side of Riddle. At least they're on Soul Point now, and that means Fnatic have to contest every Dragon from here on out, because it's not like a Cloud Soul, it is Ocean. It's going to be very impactful with people like Kex buying time on that front line, being able to kind of play Disrupt and get all the sustain he will get from that Ocean. It's going to make Fnatic's life even harder, and with the fact that you've got Gooby setting up with all the picks as well, it's just going to be even harder for him to deal with, so... Get a little worried here for Fnatic. I'm concerned, honestly. Been concerned for a while. A little bit concerned at the draft, but I was like, if they can make something happen. But the losing bot lane was such a, a thorn in their side. And then Kex has just been on fire this game on the Wukong. Honestly, stellar play. And it's going to get to the team fights. I'm going to be like, what is the game plan, realistically? You're hoping that Riddle engage oh. into you and completely botch it is essentially the game plan. Good exhaust by Slowkey. I mean, Everyone is now leaning towards this top side. They just, they can't really do anything. Like, the Orn's already pretty tanky. They can't just dive him at that health. And Riddle are able to push them away. This ping's coming out. I, I'm not sh I guess in theory you could be quick enough. But I, I don't think you're going to get there. Like, if you committed really heavily, you might reach them at the tier 2. But it's a pretty different in play. So, I think Riddle will just back off from that. Probably reset soon, Gooby low on mana, and there's nothing they really need to play for right now. They can kind of just chill, wait for that next dragon and play towards that. Because again, if Fnatic come in and they hard commit to try and steal the dragon, it might cost them the fight. And Riddle don't really care if Fnatic get a dragon. They just want to win the game and likely get the Baron off the back of that. So definitely windows for Riddle to capitalize on. There is some deep wards that Fnatic have placed down, but they're not even on the side of the map that you necessarily want them for the dragon. And I don't think they're in a position to take a Baron play. Ephelios is still fast at taking Baron, but he's not as fast as he used to be. And this yeah. Ephelios is pretty underfed. I only got two items, and it's looking like they are actually going into some armor pen for Bean. Typically, we see the Hurricane as the second item on to an Ephelios, but I think now he's starting to worry about the fact that the front line is getting tankier and tankier. And he's probably not going to be able to use that Hurricane too effectively for now. So that might be the third item. Might just skip it altogether. Obviously, we'll be lacking a little bit more in that attack speed department if he doesn't pick up a Zeal item. I, mean, I think I think the Hurricane is really good here because there's a lot of melee champions in your face. Yeah. But you know you need the armor pen as soon as possible, or you're just never killing. I mean, look at the enemy team: Ninja Tabby, Ninja Tabby, Ninja Tabby. And, and those three are hard targets to kill because you know Orn is very tanky. Gets extra stats from his items. Uh, Gwen, obviously, you can just pop a W, and then. 
Wukong really hard to pin down when he's ulting and like going into his clones and stuff. It's just a tricky scenario to be in. And two minutes on this next dragon. So Fnatic start to make moves, trying to establish some vision in the area, but they have to be really careful. In the meantime, Riddle kind of trying to push up the side lanes and then they can rotate them in. Take over here. It's not a great look for Fnatic, to be honest, be down right now. Um, 20 minutes into the game and we think back to their last game they played. And that was the big one. That was the one we'd been waiting for. Actually, that wasn't the big one. It was the day before was the uh, BTXL Fnatic game. And, you know, coming out of that and going back into the group stages and then losing to Riddle. Who, in all fairness, Riddle are seven and four. So it's not like Riddle are a weak team. It's not like our Resolve XL game we had just before this, where Resolve are two and nine. They were the lowest. Um, well, they're three and nine now, but they were the two and nine team at the time. The lowest in their group. So, you know, it's 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 not a lost Fnatic need. There are a lot of questions pulled up for during the cross phase as well, where we were saying, are oh, Group B, is Group B the easier group? Is Group A the harder group? I mean, it's just, it's just weird. Fnatic before, it felt like there was just like untouchable air about them. Yeah. Especially when they had their dominance in the scene where they were like winning everything. Even if people took games off them, it generally felt like, well, you know, you know they're going to come through in the end. You know they're going to be strong in playoffs. After the XL smashing in spring, and after some of the performance of this split, and I mean last split as well, I don't really feel that way anymore. I could see Fnatic being taken out before finals in their current form. That's worrying. I mean, even losing this game is a big concern. They're not in the clear, likely to make playoffs at this point, but definitely not in the clear. And if they start dropping games, they can be punished. That's a clear by Ruxlands on the PlayStation. The Moonlight Vigil is going to spread, and that's the Graviton to lock everybody in place. The Call of the Force God knocks up everyone, and Kex slides in with a Cyclone. This is Fnatic being absolutely demolished as Featherman's taken out, and Pride just about gets away with his life as the arrow will land onto Maxi, but he'll be able to survive for now as Gooby looks to hunt him down. Maxi sprints to safety, and Fnatic will be destroyed before the soul comes up. And the soul will be secured by the side of Riddle. And that just makes things so much worse. And, and you know you know how sometimes you have these fights and a team wins and you're like, oh, well, uh, of course they win. Look how far ahead they are in gold. I don't even think this was one of those. Like they stomped it because of that. But like this fight didn't even look close. This didn't look like, oh, Fnatic had some extra damage. It just didn't uh, feel Maxi? like Fnatic could really play the game. And Maxi's dead. This could be Baron. It's yeah, I mean, you're open soul. You're going to sustain up. It's only a red. You don't need it. You're going to try and get a bit of damage off of the Calibron, but here comes the flash from Rux. The Blast Cone is used. Oh, the Blast Cone only definitely Gooby's knocked out of the pit as PlayStation flashes up the wall into the red buff, and now he hooks to jump away to safety. Bean actually starting to do some pretty serious damage. He's got the Lulu to buff him up, and Bean able to kill PlayStation, but MC with the needlework is just slicing through Fnatic Rising. Febby and Pride next up as Kex is able to get the monkey buff off, and Febbivan flashes away to safety. Baron will definitely be on the cards here for Riddle now. Yeah, and I mean, Maxi has no flash, so there's no way he gets in the pit easily. But I fight off too much and end up getting punished. Now, Baron isn't the fastest with the, the Saudi Varus, but Gwen does a lot of sustained damage. I think Fnatic want to try and contest this one, though. We'll see if they can pull it off, but I think it's probably just going to be gone before Maxi gets there. And Maxi has no flash gun. He has no way over. Baron is secured. And Bean can only do a little bit of interruption. It just it doesn't even feel close. And let's watch this replay back. I want you to watch Deadly. I mean, sorry, not Deadly. Bean, sorry. On a Felios. Okay, so he ults there. Presses his Q. Okay, now he presses... Okay, he's knocked up. Now he presses his Q and hits Kex a little bit. And there's a couple of waters. That's it. And I don't think Bean played this incorrectly. I just think it's so hard to play these team fights. You yeah. can't get in, you can't get close, you can't auto anyone because they're either, you know, immune to ranged attacks or it's their clone or they got 7,000 armor. And I think this comp just falls apart in the later stages. And I think it's frustrating that they, they put themselves in this position where, you know, Thresh of Felios scales pretty well, but you, you put them in a scenario where they're just doomed to fail and you were so reliant on your mid jungle popping off. Uh, 
feel like maybe, you know, some issues oh. with the draft, but there's definitely some misplay factors here. And I mean, just look at MC's full HP. Tex is full HP. I mean, they're just not taking damage. And this is pre-Ocean Soul. Now they have the Ocean Soul. Actually, no, that was post-Ocean Soul. Sorry. But yeah, you know, they're untouchable now. It's it's it's, it's so really hard, hard I mean, to steal Window. Just, we just saw Rux and Febby burn their ultimates on a clone oh, from uh, Kex. And that's ultimates down. There's, there's some pretty big tools. I mean, the box not as powerful as the culling for, like, at least the wave clear for the culling. The Baron, Soul... PlayStation is caught out as they do look to try and get some damage into slow Q, but he's going to lose half his health. Baby is still starting to hurt. He is still doing damage here on the Lucian. As MC jumps into Febivan, the needlework doing a lot of work as here comes the call of the Forge God. Three oh members knocked Lord. up. And MC with the sniff sniff is on a rampage as he gets himself a double kill. Mopping through the members of Fnatic as PlayStation will take out the third. And it's only been, it's only Maxi defending into Ocean Soul and Baron. I think Fnatic's options have been worn out here. Nothing I can do. In. I mean, we'll watch Bean try. He's gonna put out the Moonlight Visual and his damage is just abysmal. He doesn't even remotely hurt PlayStation. And the day of upset continues as Fnatic Rising fall to Riddle. Honestly, gotta give credit to Kex. Really solid Wukong play. Uh, Got to give kind of the bot lane as well and the 2v2 challenging from as early as level one and find an advantage, but also some question marks for Fnatic. Uh, really felt like similar to what we saw from XL earlier, they were taking some fights that you weren't really sure. It felt like they weren't sure if they wanted to take and they just ended up getting burnt on them. Uh, we also had this scenario where, you know, the comp was so reliant on mid jungle just popping off and Udia isn't in the same position he was a few patches ago. So it was a, a rough one to find the advantage. I think Riddle had a massive draft this difference, but also Fnatic, there's still these question marks. The play isn't optimal, and it feels like the coordination is just not what it used to be. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I, d I do think, you know, both of our academy teams have had a rough day, but they've also both had a pretty rough split. I feel like we haven't seen, you know, that true dominant form from both Fnatic and XL, and today has highlighted that perfectly. Anyway, it's time for us to throw to a break, and when we're back, we'll be back with the analyst test to break down that game a little bit more. So grab yourself a glass of water and stay hydrated, friends. We'll see you in a moment. Max, press the button. <laughs> 